It is not a good week for the Battlefield franchise. Electronic Arts has shut down Ridgeline Studios, which is where Marcus Leto was designing a narrative Battlefield experience. This is certainly a big blow to the future of Battlefield, but the context of this happening paints a little bit of a different picture. So yesterday, EA announced a 5% layoff from its workforce, which is around 670 people. And to be perfectly honest, this has been on the smaller side of layoffs considering what the rest of the tech industry is going through right now. It's very possible that more layoffs will soon follow. Obviously, I hope that's not the case, but that has been the trend right now. But what's concerning about this for Battlefield fans in particular is that EA has decided to shut down projects that they have deemed as probably least likely to generate profit. And lumping at least part of the Battlefield experience into that is not a great sign. And unfortunately, Ridgeline was not the only studio to get affected by these layoffs. Respawn Studio, the guys who make Apex Legends and the Jedi Survivor games, also got hit by this. Uh, more layoffs for them and a canceled project that was a single player FPS allegedly revolving around the Star Wars Mandalorian IP. And to be honest, I actually find this cancellation more surprising than Battlefield because the Star Wars Jedi Survivor game apparently beat out the sales of Star Wars Fallen Order. So you would think EA would want to continue funding Star Wars based single players being made by Respawn, right? Well, apparently not. Maybe it has something to do with the FPS element here. I know there's kind of a stigma within the industry that first person is not as attractive for a narrative experience as third person. And so maybe the higher ups were just looking at that on paper and going, ah, cancel that one, too risky, first person. Now that said, there are more details released from EA that makes this news a little bit less clear. Obviously firing people who work on Battlefield content is not good. But apparently the single player experience that Ridgeline was working on is now being taken over by Criterion. Is this the same planned experience from Ridgeline? Well, almost certainly not, especially if most of the team working on it was let go. So something single player is still coming, but I would imagine the scope must have been shrunk massively. EA also reiterated in their statement that the Battlefield team is currently the largest in the franchise's history and that they are making meaningful progress with Vince Zampella at the head. So shutting down Ridgeline may in fact actually be EA way overshooting the mark and having to scale back on just how profitable this franchise can be. And to look at this firing as purely a reflection of the Battlefield franchise isn't particularly fair. Days earlier, Sony announced that they were laying off 900 people, and there were other layoff announcements from other game companies in this very same week. The industry as a whole right now is having, shall we say, a major correction due to the COVID bubble. During COVID, the demand for digital content multiplied massively, sending profits and stocks through the roof for companies in a position to capitalize on this. The game industry was generally eating well during this time, but game development is a slow process, so while this led to a lot of new hirings and studios being formed, while well, the bubble has ended and everyone is going back to work and has less time to play games. Now all these tech companies are left with the lower pre-pandemic demand for digital content and they still have a massively expanded workforce, which is why we are now in the season of the mass layoffs and it's industry-wide. There's a very good chance that you know somebody who's been let go in the midst of all of this craziness. And it seems like almost every one of the major studios has made the same miscalculations and sadly the employees are largely paying the price. So Ridgeline shutting down is more than just a reflection of the Battlefield franchise on its own, but rather an implication of poor business decisions where the studio probably shouldn't have been opened in the first place. And unfortunately, I would probably agree on paper anyway, that a Battlefield narrative experience is not something that I would expect to be a big moneymaker. As a Battlefield mega fan, even I've only completed a few of their narrative experiences, and usually only because they tied into some sort of unlock that 
improved the multiplayer experience which is what I was really interested in. And that's not to say that I don't think the team at Ridgeline couldn't have made a good game. I think it's very possible that they may have created an amazing experience that surprised everyone and sold well. But on paper, and that is really the level these decisions are being made at, a battlefield narrative experience is just simply a risk, an expensive risk. And big companies minimize risk when business is bad. Industrial Toys, the company behind the Battlefield Mobile experience, was also shut down last year. Though this came as less of a surprise, and I think EA was learning a lot about the mobile FPS industry when Apex was met with extremely positive responses, but poor retention and monetization. I think EA had a hard time envisioning a future where Battlefield Mobile would have been profitable and they pulled the plug early. So what does this mean for the future of the Battlefield franchise from a gamer perspective? Well, to be perfectly honest, the content I'm interested in hasn't really changed much. We still have Vince Zampella leading the overall project. And according to leaks, they're doing something that I thought they should have done a long time ago, which is have some branch of Battlefield serve as a free onboarding experience for the player base. According to a recent leak from Tom Henderson, the next Battlefield game will launch in October of 2025. It'll feature a modern military, 64 players, a four class system, and an overhauled destruction system. None of which is particularly eyebrow raising information, but it'll also include a free battle royale experience. And before I comment further on this, again, all of this info is a leak, and secondly, it's pretty topical information. But if EA is doing a free Battle Royale, that means they would be setting themselves up to go head-to-head -head with Call of Duty. There's obviously a lot of mixed feelings about this. Battlefield never started out as a Royale, so a lot of the core player base isn't really interested in the Royale experience. But then again, neither did Call of Duty, and currently its Royale experience is the most popular feature it offers. I personally thought Firestorm was an absolutely fantastic foundation for a Royale. It was just locked behind a $60 paywall, and they also just never gave the mode any attention or planning that it deserved. So if they do create a destruction-heavy Royale, I think Battlefield could set itself apart or rather above its competition. But then again, the hype for Royales has shifted, so it's hard to say if this move from EA is way too late on its part. Then again, I think Royale are fun and if EA makes a good Royale that changes the formula a little bit there will be a player base for it. And if there's one thing I'm almost certain of it's that there will be very little risks taken which means very little innovation. Going back to the basics, looking at what other developers are doing, modifying it slightly and coming out with the battlefield version of that. So to expect a curveball new game mode is very unlikely in my opinion. Overall I do feel feel really bad that so many people were let go from Ridgeline. I was also particularly excited about a Seattle-based studio making Battlefield content, and I hope that those devs land on their feet. But if the Battlefield team truly is still bigger than it's ever been, with Vince Zampella in charge, I am still excited about the future of the franchise. What do you guys make from all this news? Were you excited for a bigger narrative focus, or are you mostly in it for the multiplayer? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe for more content like it, and hit that notification bell to beat the YouTube algorithm with me. Up next, check out the latest uh, fun stuff that's been going on in the Star Citizen world. As always guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.